everyone. Welcome to Aftermath TV, a brand new episode where apparently no one wants to sit beside me. <laughs> well, we're, you know the court order. You have to stay so far yeah. away. Like, Cooties. do I smell? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Um, to my left, Nug, you All guys right. still switched places, but yep. I'm getting used to it. Yeah, we're trying it out. We're seeing how it works. I think it's better lighting for him. That's what it I is. I think that's what... So you took one for the team. I did. Okay. And of course, Anthony Corelli. Yes, we're the bread or the shved, <laughs> and you're the meat. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the meat. Today. I love that. I love all the shved jokes. Okay, guys, let's get right into aftermath right now. Uh, the next Raw pay per view is coming up, and it is Extreme Rules, just around the right around the corner. And the six pack challenge has been canceled. And I know that you guys are never in favor of having so many superstars in the ring at the same time. So I want to know how you guys feel about this. I'm more than fine with it. I think everybody in the pool gets done a lot, uh, but I also like that the potential six guys now have matches. It looks like Finn right. Balor and Corbin are going to have something. It looks like Owens and Braun are getting into something. And for sure, we know Lashley and Roman are going to have something. I'd rather see that and have that all mean something than one everybody in the pool match. Yeah, I mean, they're asking us to get into the competition aspect and, and suspend our disbelief. And, and that's very difficult when there's a six-pack challenge. There's no other sport I can think of um, that has... Six people competing for, for one prize. Yeah, you don't see six guys at a table tennis tournament all on one table. Yeah, or any sport. Although that'd be really cool. The hustler Rip Rogers would always say, you don't see the Packers playing the Giants and these guys run in. And <laughs> I, think I, I think I mix sports there. Oh, yeah. But anyway, way better. Much better. Separate them all. Let's have one-on-one -on -one matches, tag matches at the most. Triple threat, maximum. The, anything beyond that is just chaotic. And it's, um, it, you're not going to find out who the best is. So in your guys' opinion, how should WWE choose the number one contender? It should, I think they should start incorporating some kind of... Uh, you can't do win-loss records for every single match because all okay. the live events are going to have a guy whose record is 1,200, whatever. But, <laughs> uh, but, but I think television wins... That, that, that's fine, especially within a year. Yeah. Maybe you can reset it every year because that's up to 50 matches, 52 matches. When I was a kid, the old magazines used to have top 10 lists for every different federation. Every territory had a top 10 list. There's an, uh, they tried doing it on SmackDown a while ago, but it really went nowhere. But if they would have an, a contender's list of who's the top contender, we don't have to magically come up with a way to find one out all the time. We could have a top 10 list. And keep it consistent, keep right? Keep it very consistent. Yeah, I think that's key. They should use Mania as the reset date. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe they should talk to us. We'll give them some ideas. <laughs> um, so many ideas. Nug, you were kind of talking about the superstars that will be competing at Extreme Rules, and I think that the card for this pay-per-view looks to, like it's going to be amazing. Like I'm excited for a lot of matchups. Um, Carmella and Asuka, we'll see Ziggler and Rollins going at it. Uh, and, and Iron Man, which is unbelievable. The best. Yeah, it's kind of Iron Man light because you shouldn't, 30. you shouldn't cut. Yeah, again, the hustler, you know, who's <laughs> my coach. He's like, you don't have a 30 man, 30 minute. Iron Man match, it's a slap in the face to guys that go an hour and stuff. I, I, I get the, the premise, you're gonna have a, you have to, uh, the, the greatest number of pinfalls in that 30 minute time frame. So you're guaranteed, guaranteed to see 30 minutes of action. I think if it was a regular match, you probably would have seen close to that anyway because they're so well matched. But uh, anyway, they should call it Iron Man Light. <laughs> Tin Man. Yeah. Who are you guys most excited to see? I, I think real? that Iron Man match has the potential to steal the whole show. Uh, we have a lot of animosity between Roman and uh, Bob Lashley <laughs> uh, for their match. Uh, but uh, the Extreme Rules match between Nia and Alexa Bliss, I think, plays to Alexa's favor. Are but you? I'm kind of growing to be like tired of this matchup between Alexa and Nia. Am I the only one who feels that way? I mean... I just feel like it's now becoming the whole AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura thing. I'm just ready for them to take on other people. Yes, and it's got a monstrous, like this This has to end is the way Nia said it last right. night. And it's going to end with a lot of weapons, which is the way it should end. Something mo uh, momentous has to happen at the end. Yeah, so they were kind of feuding before Ronda was introduced into the equation. Now she's been removed and the kind of feud continues. So hopefully it's the end. Um, I know Dolph and Seth are definitely going to go out there and... Try oh, yeah. to steal the show. That's always their goal. And then now we get now it's it's Bobby and Bob. um, huh? Roman kept calling him Bob. Last <laughs> yeah, Roman and Bob. <laughs> and people want to see like how like Bob is pretty strong looking. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it's going to be uh, two behemoths. And I think this is going to have implications to who's going to fight Brock eventually. I think so too. Okay, something I'm really excited about. Team Hell No is back yes. and taking on the Bludgeon Brothers at Extreme Rules for a shot at the title. What do you, okay, first of all, what was your, re your reaction when you saw Kane come out? I 
I was so happy. There might have been tears. <laughs> it, it, it was just like... It was so wonderful to see them back, to see Daniel Bryan go, I don't know. Like, he didn't want to dive into it right away. And then when H Kane put the arms out for the hug, that was the best. And then I loved it. Daniel Bryan walks away, but then it's like that true love moment where you're like, wait a second. I can't say no to Let you. Let me come back to you. That's right. Yeah. Look, crowd's into it. Well, they, because they were on the same team, and then they fought against each other. So you don't know which Kane is going to come out. Is he going to attack him? Is he going to be friends? People love the nostalgic throwback to this team. And it was only five, five years ago. Not, yeah. But it was so entertaining at the time that, anyway, obviously people were excited to see it. It's definitely a feel-good moment. Uh, and Daniel Bryan's getting beaten up. He's small. And every shot he takes to the head, I'm like, ah. Oh. I, I know you can't say, hey, want to fight, but no shots in the face. You know, <laughs> you can't do that. I saw it once in a schoolyard fight. But anyway, that's different. <laughs> so now he has some backup. He has Kane, a big guy to help protect him and divide up some of the beating because he seems to be just taking a tremendous beating ever since he's come back. And there, there are a lot of people who are upset that Daniel Bryan's not in the main event picture, like he should be going after right. the title. But I think we don't need to see Daniel Bryan going for that right away. You want to see Daniel Bryan in a title match at WrestleMania, the end. You don't want to see it at a random pay-per-view on the way to WrestleMania. Do you guys think that Kane's mind's ready for this? I mean, he is in the running for mayor, so he's got a lot on his plate right now. Yeah, I, th I think it's detrimental. I mean, there are those people that want to take him as serious as a candidate, and then it it's beneficial in some sense to remove yourself from being a, a member of the circus, basically. Right. <laughs> some people might see that, right? But those that are wrestling fans, they're going to vote for him regardless because they know him. And those that are not wrestling fans, it might be beneficial to separate. So, it's interesting weird. choice. He's getting out of one circus and getting into another circus. Yeah. Because politics is a circus. Yeah. But I like that putting a mask on and coming out and hugging Daniel Bryan will not hurt his chances to become mayor. <laughs> it can only help. <laughs> This is very true, actually. <laughs> Maybe Kane will even throw up a yes oh, chance. Oh, sure. Um, do you guys think that SmackDown needs another tag team? They have a lot of tag teams, but right now no one can beat the Bludgeon Brothers. So, uh, this, so this should be really like a really interesting match. Then. Absolutely. This is actually making people, like for a while, the Bludgeon Brothers, who have had the titles since before WrestleMania, haven't really wrestled, haven't really defended these titles. So here's a chance for the titles to mean something against a team that everyone's interested in, Team Hell No. Yeah, the SmackDown tag team division went from kind of insignificant to at, on the, at the forefront in one, in one night. Absolutely. So if you're Team Hell No, what's your match plan against the Bludgeon Brothers? I, I, Kane matches up very well with Harper and Rowan. So I'd like to see Kane go out there and throw down with two other huge dudes. And then once they're softened up, tag in Daniel, knees everywhere. Yeah, I mean, they work very well as a team. I think separating them and isolating them is going to be beneficial. Um, if you can make them some kind of uh, break down some, somehow in terms of their jellification. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, something I really hate talking about. Uh, we have some injuries again in WWE. Yes. Bray Wyatt was in a car accident, and Shinsuke Nakamura was bit by a dog. <laughs> so they've lost TV time. So what does this mean for the superstars and the brand going forward? Because they're a part of some major storylines right now. Yeah, Bray Wyatt wasn't on the show last night, and Matt Hardy had to fight the B team alone, basically. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't bode well for your Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura looks like he's getting into a uh, title picture with uh, U.S. champ Jeff Hardy. Right. But if he can't be on TV, how effective is that going to be? Is anybody going to care? Especially after coming off of this not-so-great AJ Styles thing, you want Shinsuke Nakamura to do well in the next thing, but it's, it's not looking good for him. Yeah, the, as soon as I saw an advertisement for Shinsuke versus Jeff, I thought, what an awesome matchup. And then, I mean, a dog bite is very uh, bizarre, and hopefully it wasn't that significant. I believe he had to get medical uh, treatment. But, you know, if a dog kind of bit once, that's fine. If it bit and shook, there can be muscle damage. But the head-on collision with Bray Wyatt in the car, that's something that I'm surprised doesn't happen more often, to be honest. They're in the car so much. They drive every single day. Yeah. And there's fatigue involved. There's long trips. So um, it's kind of a matter of time before people get in, in accidents in cars. There's been deaths on the road. Absolutely. Adrian Adonis and Joey Morella, you know, come to mind right away. Um, and and just driving is dangerous in general. Absolutely. So I'm glad that, no that's one's That's kind of expect, not expected, but not, not surprising. A dog bite is, that's I'm insane. glad they're okay. I'm yeah, just glad 100%. they're both fine. 
Yeah, and we hope to see them back on TV soon. That was actually a very interesting perspective. And Thanks it's interesting that. that the dogs also sometimes want something different, want some Japanese. <laughs> oh, my Boo. goodness. All right, guys, we got to go to break <laughs> on that note. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the pro wrestling scene in Japan. There is a massive worldwide appeal right now for WWE yes. and they are working with Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan and we will see Hideo Itami competing in September. So my question for my two friends who are oh so knowledgeable <laughs> about the WWE wizards. is, Very yes, absolute wizards, is what is the wrestling scene like in Asia? The, in Japan, they have their own star system. They have superstars you've never heard of unless right. you uh, find stuff online or it used to be tape trading back in the day. Remember tapes? Yeah. Yeah. Remember tapes? Um, <laughs> they have their own stars. They have their own world over there. And when WWE comes over, it's the Western cool alternative to what they have going on. Much like here, the WWE is the main thing with their own superstars. And then we get the alternative Japanese guys coming over. It's like that weird other thing that I want to know more about. Yeah. Ja I know a lot about Japan. I grew up doing judo, and um, my second dad was my sensei, you know, and he actually wrote this. This is my judo club kind of name on there. Um, anyway, so I, when I started wrestling, I went to Japan. That's where I thought, um, because I did judo, and judo is Japanese, I, I would give me a, an advantage there. I lived there for a year in all of 2004, and I was blown away by the different, the, the amount of different companies, the, the talent, I mean, these are guys that, okay, they're, 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 let's say there's guys like Mr. Fujiwara. He was an older guy, still wrestling. So this is a legend that had a whole career and tapered off and retired. And people in, in North America never even heard about him. And there's a lot of guys like that. There was Zero One and Hustle and New Japan, All Japan, Big Japan. Like, there were so many different companies. And there are so many different wrestlers. And, and I remember talking with friends saying, like, how come these guys aren't so famous back home and stuff. So I knew of the, the, the depth of the talent pool over in Japan. And, and again, the different genres, they take everything to the extreme. They have, um, their comedy wrestling is awesome. Their work shoots are <laughs> insane. Um, and there's definitely a trend because before you wouldn't have Japanese wrestling on TV here, mm -hmm. but the way the consumers are consuming, the product is changing. You don't need television, now you can watch for uh, specifically New Japan, uh, on, on the computer. Right. So the exposure is, is, is insane. Now, and also there's a lot of stuff going on with different companies and guys over there and, you know, the Kenny Omegas and all that stuff and they're wrestling for these, these companies. And it seems like WWE just wants a piece, of the, a piece of the pie. Like, there's a lot going on there. Why aren't we there? Yeah. So, so we're d developing and establishing relationships to exchange talent back and forth it so makes sense do we see the pro wrestling scene in japan go the same way as it's going in the uk at the moment i i would think it's possible but you've seen a lot of japanese stars come over to nxt so we've got you know uh kairi sane is there right. asuka was there shinsuke nakamura was there uh, the club was in japan aj styles was in japan they're all over here now so i'm wondering if there doesn't necessarily need to be an NXT version of uh, uh, in Japan because we're already getting them but in NXT. That's interesting. Yeah. So it makes it sound like it's a pipeline that comes from Japan a into the bit. WWE. So yeah, as soon as the North American market they show an interest in the Japanese talent, then then they'll they'll do that. But there's no need to do that uh, an NXT there because they're just developing talent for free on, on their own. That's right. J uh, professional wrestling is bigger in Japan than it is in North America. It's way bigger. Which is perfect segue into what we're going to talk about next because they're saying one of the best female wrestlers at the moment comes from Japan, Io, Sh Iro Io Shirai, mm -hmm. and she will be joining NXT. So I want to know what you guys think about her coming now into the WWE and what it means for her and the brand overall. I think it's fantastic. We already saw Asuka come, we've seen Kairi Sane come, and now we've got Io Shirai. This long standing, it looks like a nice tradition being started of these fantastic Japanese women wrestlers coming over to NXT, learning the WWE way, and then yes. coming to the main roster. And it's fantastic. You know what I love about it? It's because we're excited, but she's also excited because she posted a photo to Instagram of a mask and it had the WWE logo on it. And she's just excited to, even though she's as big as she is in Japan, to make that transition over to NXT, which I think that in itself would excite the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're a Japanese professional wrestler and you have success in North America, it's it's valued differently there. Right. It's a little bit interesting. But that being said, less is more with regards to having 
Japanese talent here. Asuka was the first and only Japanese woman at the time, and it was very incredible. Now, to bring over more, the question is, is it going to dilute her success and significance here? If you're Asuka, do you feel, I hate to use the word threatened, but do you, are you a little nervous? you got to keep your head on a swivel. Right. You've got competition, but that's what makes you better is competition. Exactly. You can't rest on your laurels. You have to have competition to make yourself better, and now you should I like it. to think of it a way, uh, uh, like in a way that it'll make Asuka better than she yes. is. Well, it also depends on the genre. So now if you bring a high-flying, lucha-style girl from Japan, that's not going to threaten Asuka so much. She's that rugged MMA-style work shoot, you know, stiff striker. So, th so they're kind of not competing uh, directly. Um, and then the other girl is... Um, Kyrie Sane with the giant flying she, elbow. Yeah, uh, she's kind of a the cutesy fighter. So again, there's always these differences. If there was a girl that came over that was like a uh, Japanese Ronda Rousey, okay, Asuka can be threatened. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think she's threatened immediately God. just because the girl's Japanese. All right, well, it's interesting. And guys, we it's a great conversation, but we have more to talk about after the break, including another three count for you Aftermath TV fans. In the upcoming release of Skyscraper, Dwayne Johnson will play the role of Will Sawyer, who will be testing his limits of courage while trying to save his family that is trapped inside of a building. Now, there's been a lot of courageous moments inside of WWE, and I want to know from you, Mr. Jimmy Corderas, which one is your favorite moment and why? For me, my favorite moment has to be Eddie Guerrero winning the WWE Championship from Brock Lesnar. Uh, it is just a tremendous feel-good story. Here is a gentleman who is battling his inner demons and, and de uh, substance abuse demons, and he lost his job with the WWE. He lost his family over this, and he had to come all the way back, face these, uh, the courage to face these problems and come back all the way and come back and win the WWE Championship from a beast like Brock Lesnar and achieve his dreams. Just incredibly, incredibly courageous. Courage has no limits. Brought to you by Skyscraper in theaters and Real D 3D July 13th. She's known for giving some of the best hugs in WWE. Here's our three count with Bailey. Is there a particular superstar who inspired your career? Um, currently or past or present? Um, I mean, Macho Man was the one that really inspired me because he was the one that caught my attention. He was the first one that I saw. And then as I was going on as a fan, Lita was the number one because she was so different from anybody on the on the women's roster that at that time. And I felt like she didn't dress like them, she didn't act like them, she didn't wrestle like them. And I, I always felt like I was different from all the girls in my school because I was very tomboyish. So I was like, oh, she's so cool. Like, I can do that too. What is the biggest misconception that some people might have about superstars? Um, that this is uh, just a fluffy, glamorous lifestyle. It's very hard. It's very difficult. Um, and struggle is real over here. <laughs> but um, I, I guess that's it. Like, I don't really know. We don't sleep. I was listening to a podcast with you and Sasha with um, Stone Cold, and you guys were talking about how you literally come in do interviews, train, and then go and compete. And yeah. I believe Sasha does CrossFit. You do yeah. some crazy intense training too. Yeah. When do you have time to do what you need to do to survive as a human being? <laughs> um, when we're home for two and a half days, yeah. I guess. We do have to do like a lot of our stuff on the road. Like sometimes we have to get our nails done on the road or sometimes we have to do, um, you know, do our taxes on the road or, you know, send uh, food to our families on the road. Like I get like meal preps and stuff like that to have it ready when I get home so that I can do everything I need to do when I'm actually home. I, I don't know. Um, you really have to, it's a lot of time management and I'm still kind of learning that being on the road like five days a week or four days a week. But uh, yeah. I'm kind of extending this three count right now. I apologize. <laughs> We're going right. to make it five count. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what do you do in your in your off days? Like, what does Bailey do to relax? And you have to feel like you want to get away sometimes from the chaos of WWE and training all the time. Yeah. Um, well, I do still train when I'm home because I love my gym. I train at the Onnit Academy in Austin, Texas. So uh, they have so many cool different things that you can do. It's like not normal. Like normally I'll go to a CrossFit gym, but they have so many different things, and their coaches are so cool. So I just like to talk and hang out with them. Um, but I have a cute 
the cutest dog in the whole world. His name is Flex. He's a Maltese Shih Tzu, and I love him. I just love taking him out and sitting at coffee shops. And my fiance, duh. Um, we, we, and it, yeah, I'm sorry. I love you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Don't worry. I love just like sitting at coffee shops and being able to like just sit him on my lap and you know take care of him. And I'm really into uh, live music. Like I love. Bands, seeing any type of band is like my favorite thing to do, and Austin's like the perfect place. Everywhere you go, there's live music, so anywhere I could catch some some live guitars. Okay, I'm gonna give you your most hard hitting question probably uh -oh. of the weekend. Uh -oh. How much do you miss your dog right now? Dude, so much. I know, me too. Uh, I'm like, he's like my mom, and I'm like, let me see Cash. That's what I do, <laughs> yeah. And now, like, he's with my sister, and she doesn't have an iPhone, so I'm like, we need to get like Tango or something I because I need to see him. It's been. Uh, like two weeks or no like a week and a half that I haven't seen him and then I'm not gonna see him because we're gonna go to South Africa and all that stuff it's like oh I hope he doesn't hate me. Do you me. think you're his mom? Like are you like mommy I, misses you? Yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and I, I hope me. he knows I just want him to know that I miss him. So next time someone makes fun of me and be like well Bailey does it too. Yeah, yeah. okay yeah, okay we're awesome. all like really like that you know. Okay we've totally extended this three count That's to like okay. ten count but Bailey seriously yeah. thank you so much thank this has been an honest like a pleasure oh, and and you. we can be dog moms from afar. Yeah, okay dog moms okay. for life. Yeah for life. For life. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. For, for life. life. Wow. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Okay, thank Thanks. you for that. Yeah, All right. No All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Goodness. What is it with all the ladies yeah. on this show become pals with Bailey? Guys, I love her, and I knew I loved her for a reason. It's because she's a dog person. Oh, she's boy. great. Uh, my question for you guys, though, is she had such a large and passionate fan base at NXT. Why hasn't she been able to connect as much with the WWE universe. I think uh, she got a chance to let the audience know who she was, and we all kind of, watching NXT, she shows up, and we all kind of grew with her, and we discovered who she was and how good she was. And then when she made it to the main roster, it was just, that's Bailey, and that's it. All we know about her is she was a lifelong wrestling fan. She wants to be a champion. Well, guess what? That's a hundred other people in WWE. True. She needs a different, special way to connect to these people other than hugs. Yeah. See, okay. When you're perceived as one of the fans, because she's like a fan, and NXT is like a stacked deck because it's the same people all the time and they get to know you. But when you come to WWE in the big arenas, they don't want to see a common person. They want to see a superstar. So when you position yourself as a common person, it could take away that, that wow effect. And I, I did that a bit too. I was a common person. Mm -hmm. I tried to make myself a common person. And I think people aren't as starstruck when they see me because I'm... I'm a fan like her. Yeah, you're a regular person. A regular guy. A human being. Just well, with, with muscles. I'm a big fan of Bailey. Even after <laughs> meeting her, before meeting her, you can tell she works really hard on her craft, and, and I hope that it's only a matter of time until she's appreciated as a whole from the WWE well, universe. We're seeing some attitude from Bailey now, so hopefully that carries her forward. Well, you, you just gave her a little rub, so she'll yeah. be more popular. <laughs> yeah, she got the shved rub. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for SmackDown Live because it's coming up now. So I guess we'll see everyone on Tuesday with Oscar. Jimmy. Oscar versus we'll see James Ellsworth tonight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Lots to look forward to right now. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Send in your questions using the hashtag AskAftermath.